So, welcome back to the next video. So, this video is going to be this warm up regulator modification. Now, the modification, I'm going to show you how to do it. You can Google it, you can find out, but I'll show you exactly how to do it. Now, adjusting this little puppy can give any good, good working engine 10 brake horsepower easily. The first we need to do is strip it apart. There we go. So, now we've got it in a stripped down state. We want to focus on this part. Now, there's two ways you can do this. This is a proper way. You can do it on the car with this together, but we're going to drill a hole through this little cap so we can see through it pretty much where that dot is in the middle. But if you drill through it and leave swarf from this inside here, you will end up splitting the diaphragm that sits around there. Now, what we want to do is drill a hole straight through the center of there. So that's why we want to take it apart and drill it and then clean it all up because you don't want that bit of swarf sitting inside there, coming loose, and then damaging the diaphragm inside the housing. So this is what we're looking to achieve. Once the hole's drilled in, we're going to be able to put our Allen key through there, and it is a 4 mil Allen key that fits in that adjuster. Why are we doing this? So we've drilled a hole through the back of that, <clears throat> so we can adjust the Allen key. Now, the Allen key is this part here. Now this part, has a center spring, an outer spring, a little cone hat, and a little push rod. So, as you can see from there, if we screw that Allen key in, it will raise the height of this. If we screw it out, it will, re it will re reduce the height of that. Now that, when it's all together, sits in the centre of there, like so. So the pin sits in there, which is in part of that, which pushes on this. Now this is our important, this is the disc that sits on the back of this housing there. So that disc, just a very thin bit of metal really, that is what seals <clears throat> or allows the amount of fuel to go through the housing. So we can see we've got a centre orifice and an off centre orifice. Now if we look closer probably can't see, but the centre one is raised. It's got a raised shoulder on it, which is the same height as this outer part. And the one up there is not raised. So the fuel comes in <clears throat> that top hole. So the fuel pressure comes in there and it sits around this circle. Now if that Allen key, that is screwed right in and that push rod is pushing fully on our metal disc. That in turn will completely block any fuel going out that hole. Now with the pressure in there the fuel pressure will push that disc off slightly which is all relevant to do with the spring force on that. So X amount of fuel pressure on a factory setting on this will allow that spring to move back and let a certain amount of fuel go through. So when the fuel comes out there and goes through, so lifts the disc and allows it to go through out of there, it then goes all the way to this union here. Now this union and how's the fuel to come through? And as you'll see closely, there is a tiny little indent in the housing. So the fuel comes through here, and see this little bit there? Just to the left of the Allen key, that's a tiny little hole. And inside there, so in this top housing, is a little house a little top hat with a pinprick hole in it. 
So the fuel from the warm-up regulator comes in here through that hole, through the pinprick hole, and fills up this orifice sitting on top of the fuel pin. So as we learned from our last video, the air flap raises and moves the fuel pin up. And then what we have is an acting force in this chamber. So the pin's down for say, we've got fuel pressure coming in the top end, pushing on that pin. Now, the greater force we have on top of this pin, the harder it is for the air flap to move up. So it'll move up, but you've got a greater force pushing down, which is gonna limit the amount of fuel that can come out of our slots. Now, if we reduce this pressure, it means that a given time when the air flap raises, it's easier for that fuel pin to raise up. And as it raises up, it lets more fuel out. So once the car is warmed up, hence the warm-up regulator, it allows a lower amount of pressure in this area, in normal standard form, to allow the engine to warm up quicker, which means allows the f more fuel to go through. Obviously more fuel, bigger bangs, engine warms up quicker. It's only about two minutes, then it, it um, the heating element here, which we'll test in a bit, once that heating element has done its job, it will then revert to its standard setting, which will change later on. So again, the pressure in here is what we're talking about is control pressure. So it controls the plunger, which then has an effect on air fuel, air fuel ratio. In standard form, when the engine's cold, this area should have about 1.7 to about 2.1 bar of pressure. Once the engine's warmed up, it, again, it is only about two minutes. Um, in here, you should have about 3.4 to 3.8 bar, about, about 50 psi. So you've got 50 psi in here, always counteracting the force that's being applied upwards. And what we're doing by, again, by reducing that, we reduce it to around 30, 35 psi area, dependent on your car. Um, it allows, I'll see, easier movement and more fuel, which is proven on, I'll see, my car, which works well. Um, from the rolling road, I've set the pressure. I set the whole car up pretty much. Um, and on the rolling road, the fuel, air fuel ratio is pretty spot on. So to reiterate, that is the modification. Physical modification, I guess. So once you've done that and you're happy there's no swarf inside, is rebuild the meter and head as you would do with a new kit. Mainly you want one seal, an O-ring that sits inside there, which is there. Um, if that gasket is fine, then there's no need to change that. But depending on what kit you buy, you can change all of it. Um, again, we'll rebuild this with the kit we do. And we can also test this. Now, this is a simple way of testing it. Because it tells you on there. So, the resistance across those two pins should be 21 ohms plus or minus 3%. So if we're getting 24 ohms, it's fine. If you're getting 28 ohms, it's not fine. But I've never found one of these that is defective yet. It's normally seals that are stuck in there preventing the fuel coming through. So we'll test this and we rebuild all that. And once we've done that, well, that'll be different because we're not really interested in the moment. Once we built that, that's fine. We can use it on something else. We know what it's doing there, but what is it actually doing with the car? So, by using our beautiful assistant here, we'll run her up, get the gauges on, and I'll, obviously I've adjusted this one anyway, but I'll physically show you, with the Alnick in there, what the pressure is at cold, see it warming up. Once the engine's warmed up, I'll actually adjust mine back and forth so you can see how the adjustment is acting on the gauge, as in raising pressure and lowering pressure. So here we are, back and ready with our beautiful assistant. We've got our gauges all set up, ready to rock and roll. And on the Golf, the warm-up regulator is sat down here. And on the XR3Is, it's up this area, obviously different engine, um, and various other locations. So there we go, mine's modified, same detail. So what we'll do is let the car run up, and we'll see what the gauges are doing. And then once it's warmed up, I'll adjust that. Just back and forward to see, so you can actually see what it's doing on the gauge. So the car's idling now from cold. You can see where we're at on the gauge. It is sped up. You're sitting about one bar and a bit. As you can see, the gauge is rising as the engine's warming up. It literally, I think it was two minutes, 15, 
ish um, all the way up to where I've got it set which is three bar so again it doesn't take long to get to its normal setting so we're up and working we're just adjusting the gauge now I'm screwing it in and as you can see it's increasing the pressure just doing a bit just to show you a physical demonstration of what's going on and then adjusting it again out putting the pressure back to where I had it set so with the adjustment we are turning it clockwise which increases the pressure and then after that it is as simple as turning it anti-clockwise to decrease the pressure so with thanks to our beautiful assistant I've shown you how to do the warm regulator modification as in drilling the hole and the principle behind it what we're actually doing and I've shown you physically again with the engine running let it warm up you can see literally two minutes it back and it's up to where I've set it to and again I've shown you where we can adjust it so you screw it in clockwise increases the pressure and the plug reduces the pressure mine's set about three bar which is where mine sits nicely um, every car is going to be different but generally you drop it down from 50 psi to about between 35 and 40 psi is where you want to be sat um, yeah three bar about 40 psi that's working perfectly in my car again the air fuel ratio um, on the rolling load of about 13 13 now push I think at, at red line which is what you really want so again hope you like the video any comments stick them in the comments and if you could click subscribe I've got a lot of, a lot of people watching the videos who don't subscribe give us a subscribe and you can keep up to date with all the other bits we're doing. See you in the next one.